Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fusion 364 FTC series. This is the 17th video in the series and if you haven't watched the previous 16 videos I recommend you do so by clicking on the card in the corner. In the last video we looked at how to create joints and what sort of joints can be created. Um, in this video we're going to look at how to modify and control joints with the motion link tool, the contact set tools, and the joint limit tool. Um, I have two examples prepared and we're going to look at two ways that you can um, use motion links with those examples. Um, so I have this sort of gear set up and um, I'll have a video in the future where I teach you how to create spur gears quickly with the scripts built in Diffusion 360. But for this setup, I'm just going to have the shafts be stationary and the, the gears are just going to rotate around the shafts. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create my revolute joint. So I'm going to go into the motion, select revolute. Um, it's probably unrigid for you, so just select revolute. And I'm going to put the middle of this gear on the middle of this shaft. Um, and uh, yes, I want it to rotate just like that. That looks perfect. So I'm going to click OK. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, just like this. Put the point here and place it here. Again, we got the revolute. Perfect. Uh, now the next step is I want to ground these shafts as, as they're going to be stationary and only the gears are going to be moving. So I'm going to double click on this and then shift, hold shift and double click. So I have both components selected or you can just select them just like this and shift click. And then I'm going to right click and choose ground. We have the pin icon. We know that these can't be moved. Um, so the next step is I'm going to use the motion link tool, just like this. Um, and actually before that, uh, I want to get my gears so they're meshing properly. Right now, you can see the teeth are sort of clipping through. Um, so I'm going to select a joint just like this and right click and choose drive joints. Um, and when you use drive joints, it's going to change it within the model permanently um, or unless you change it later or undo it. So if I do uh, 7.5, I already know the angle that it has to turn. Um, that looks like it's meshing uh, pretty perfectly. So I'm going to click OK. And now you can see um, once Fusion loads that it's rotated in the right place. Um, so the next step, use the motion link. And the first thing that asks for is it asks for some joints that are going to be linked. So I'm going to choose my joints over here from the drop down, or you can just uh, ho hover over them in the model, just like that. And now we can see that our joints are actually rotating together. Um, and we can specify the, the angle here um, that they're rotating. And in um, a, a joint that's more complicated, you'll, you'd be able to select like different axes or planes here to move along. Um, so, um, as we know, gears move in opposite directions, and since these gears are both 24 teeth, they are going to move at the same speed. So if these gears were not um, the same amount of teeth, the way that you would do that in this motion link is you would make it so if this one had, um, had double teeth, then you would make it so it rotated 180 degrees, while the other one only ro rotated um, 360. So it would be one would be rotating faster than the other, uh, twice as fast. So I'm going to put this back on 360. Really, the numbers just have to be the same uh, for a one-to-one -one ratio. It really doesn't matter what they are as long as they're the same. Um, so I'm going to put one as negative, and now you can see they're meshing properly. Um, that looks pretty cool, um, and they're rotating in opposite directions just like we want to do. Um, if we click the reverse icon here, um, it would reverse the direction, um, but we just want it like this. Just like that is perfect. I'm going to click OK, and now you can see that we have um, something here called the motion link, um, and this is just um, uh, the link between these two joints. If I right-clicked on this joint and I did animate model, what you'd notice is that the joints are now moving together, and that's because of this motion link. If you, if I, if I drive any one of these joints. Um, in the model, it will use the motion link and drive both. Um, now, if I did drive animate joint, as we discussed before, it's just going to animate that joint as if it doesn't care about this or the motion link. 
when you're doing animate joint. So if you have a motion link, and you want to see how it looks, make sure to drive um, with the uh, animate model, just like that. Um, that's that's great. Um, now, I want to add one more thing to this, and then uh, we'll be done with this model. I want, I want my gears to only be able to rotate uh, 180 degrees total. Uh, we'll pretend it's on uh, like a servo or something, and it's not on continuous rotation mode. Uh, so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to right-click on my joints, and I'm going to edit my joints limits. If you didn't see that, I'll go back and do it again. I may have went a little bit too fast. Um, just right click here and then edit joint limits just like that um, And by default, there's no minimum and maximum uh, For this joint it can just go all the way around and keep going forever So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the minimum and I'm it's going to automatically check the maximum And now we can define the joint limits for this. So uh, my minimum is I want it to be at negative uh, 90 and my maximum is 90. And we can see the amount that it can rotate here by this purple thing. Uh, if we animate that, you can see that it's going to go there and it's going to come back. So it can only go that much, uh, just like that. If we click, click the flip, it would be on the top now. Um, I, it really doesn't matter if it's on the top or the bottom. I'll just leave it on the bottom, just like this. Click OK. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing here. We can right click on the joint here or in the menu, edit joint limits, um, and just like that. Um, and let's see, did we did we get everything properly? Oh, uh, there we go. We clicked on the wrong one. Uh, so Revolute 2, click on minimum and maximum. Again, negative 90 and 90. And now we have it just like that. Now if we right clicked on this joint, uh, and we did animate model, you'd notice that it's now, the gears can only turn uh, 180 degrees total. They're turning together, everything's working properly. That looks wonderful. Um, so hopefully you've been following along and trying this out for yourself, as there's a lot of ways to get stuck, um, especially if we hadn't grounded these shafts here. Um, you may have had an issue if you didn't ground these where, uh, the, the one of the gears would be rotating and it would seem like the other one's stationary and it's actually because the shaft is rotating and not the gear. Uh, so that's something to be careful of. Um, so that's all for this model. Uh, in this one we used a motion link between two joints and we used edit joints to define the joint limits. Um, so next, let's take a look at this model here. And for this one, um, I just want this, this sort of ring to slide up and down this pole and rotate. So as we know, what we want to use for that is we want to use the cylindrical joint, which is a mix between the slider and the revolute. And we do not want to use pin slot because it's rotating and moving on the same axis. So put it on cylindrical. Um, I'm going to select my points here, just like this. It's going to line up in the center there. I'm just going to flip it. Um, and we can animate it and see if it's it's working. Um, it's hard to tell that this thing is rotating, but um, there we go, we got it. Uh, just like that. Um, you could, we could use a slider joint. Maybe I'll change it to slider. Uh, it, the, the rotation really isn't a big part of this example. Uh, so just like that, it's sliding up and down. Looks great. I'm going to click OK. Now, we have an issue, and that's that the, the slide, this thing is, is going outside the model. And we don't want that. Um, it's going up and down and stuff. So we have a few options here. We could use joint limits. And we could say the maximum that you can go is up to the top of this thing up here. And the bottom of the minimum that you can go is down here. And then it would stay in between. But if we change the height of this pole, uh, we would have some trouble. And we would have to go back and edit that um, and, and make sure that everything was looking Good. Um, so what we're going to use here is contact sets. And basically, with contact sets, Fusion 360 will um, know if geometry is intersecting, and it will prevent that from happening. Um, so basically, it's going to go up, and then it's going to stop before the geometry intersects. Um, so there's two things that you can use here. Um, there's enable contact sets, and there's enable all contact. 
They're somewhat, it's basically the same tool, enable contact sets instead of enabling the contact sets for all the contact, uh, the, the components in the model, it enables it for the ones that you choose. Um, if you do enable all contact, it's going to do it for all the, um, the components. So I'm just going to do enable all compact uh, contact just like this. Um, and now you can see we have something pop up here and it's called contact all. Now, um, now that we have the contact set created with all the components, uh, if we go ahead and we drive this joint just by right clicking and choosing drive joint and we zoom in like this, you would notice that fusion will stop us once we get to the top of this. So I'm going to bring it up and now I can't go anymore. In reality, I can go more. It'll just have to uh, jump through, jump through the top. It won't let it exist inside um, this piece right here. So just like that, you can move it down. Again, I can't move it inside. It'll just have to pop over, just like that. Um, so that that's the contact sets. It's it's pretty simple to use. Um, it gets more complicated the more joints and stuff you're adding, um, and in reality you're going to have to use it with joint limits and stuff but they're both very good tools to um, to add to your toolkit on creating joints and realistic robots um, so that's all for today's video um, in the next video we're going to be finishing um, our screw and nut we're going to be um, before the rendering process, of course, we're going to be jointing the screw and nut together. You may have some idea of what type of joint we're going to use there and what tools. Uh, but if you haven't guessed already, we're going to be using a cylindrical joint. We're going to be using a, a motion link. Um, and we're going to be using contact sets. Um, so uh, I hope to see you in that video and I hope you learned something.